What's up, guys? This is your boy Chris June. I'm down here at WTT Radio. Got a new radio show coming out called Last Call with Chris June. I want you guys to make sure you download the app at WTTRadio.com and make sure to tune in for all of these hot topics that we're discussing. Like, the, hold, hold on. Wait, no, no, no. No, hold on. Because I wasn't finished. I wasn't finished, okay? So, my point being is. Hi. <coughs> <laughs> Olivia. I love the fact that, like Chris, um, I'm divergent. I like to call myself the amalgamation of sorts because I can exist in many different places. Um, why? Because... She's nimble! <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, <clears throat> I think it's my ability to be uh, self-reflective, being able to look at myself from an unbiased eye and uh, uh, see the areas that I need to change. Um, I think for me, uh, the ability to constantly grow and evolve and become better is how I see I should be for myself. Um, not staying stuck in a position that I was, in a mindset that I was two, three years ago, or four years ago, or five years ago. I can always elevate every day I'm learning. place and party where men can be men. It is going to be at the Grand Resort and Spa. If you follow me or have been following me, you know that I love this freaking hotel. It is off the chain. You see there that David is the face of the event. Check out the website at eventsbywest.com. There are 10 exclusive reasons why you would love this event over any other event. We have an option, a plethora of options for passes, the VIP pass, the guest pass, and the grand VIP pass. That is the resort right there. Look at that guy. Doesn't he feel happy about <laughs> receiving his massage? There are so many opportunities and great advantages to coming to this trip. It's going to be exclusive and it is a private event. So definitely you will need to get your passes in order to enjoy. Once again, check out events by West dot com events by West dot com there's a pool party there's the penthouse jacuzzi party you'll be meeting a lot of people like cash and some other socialites that uh, grace our timelines and it's just gonna be a fun experience the resort is right on the beach it's very cost-effective you guys will love it so once again check out events by West dot com <laughs> right. What's going on, world? Thank you guys for tuning in to A Connection TV, the one channel on YouTube where we actually adopt some of the connections despite our differences. And welcome to Culture Club. Like we do on every episode of Culture Club, we are going to reintroduce ourselves from our right to our left. State your name and what is one thing that you can absolutely not, not leave the house without? My name is Mikey. One thing I can't leave the house without is my EOF ball from my lips. All right. Uh, my name is Larry, and there is nothing I can leave that I can't leave the house without because I forget things often. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you guys say y'all hate his responses all the time. 
because it's always PC. But um, <laughs> my name is Wesley. First of all, whoa! No, I heard you didn't read that comment. No, I read that comment. Well, listen. So somebody who reads all the comments, right? You tried to shade me on the last. It wasn't just trying to shade. I was just I'm telling you. Like it. That's that's on you. I mean, like that's that's just who I am. And, Ooh, all right. I was just making a comment. I was just trying to help you. My name is Wesley, and the one thing that I cannot leave the house without is my wallet. So I understood the question totally different. Because you said the one thing I can't leave the house without, and I was like, oh, praying. No, I can't leave the house without praying. That's fine. That works. <laughs> so that, works. That, works. That, works. that works for you. Okay. Right. I actually have three things I always have to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I always have my keys on my phone. I always have those things. I always check to say I wallet keys phone. Okay. My name is Ashley and I can't leave the house without my phone. All right. So, um, Levi wanted us to talk about gentrification and uh, what's going on in Atlanta currently. Um, and so, uh, hi Levi. Levi couldn't be here. Levi has a broken toe. I'm oh, not sure how that happened. But hopefully he is going to have a speedy recovery. But um, who wants to attack that particular issue? Because apparently it's running. It's a it's a huge issue. <laughs> well, I think um, <laughs> see. So with gentrification, I think it's two pieces. Like you always hear the negative pieces of gentrification, but there are positive pieces to gentrification. And I don't feel like gentrification is based on color. I think it's on socioeconomic status. And that's the piece that people forget because if you move into a neighborhood where the median income is 15,000 a year and you make 100,000, you are a gentrifier because what happens is you want different things. You want, you want that Starbucks. You want different restaurants. You want all of those things that weren't there before which bring higher taxes and different things to the community and different attention. Like nobody wants to live in a neighborhood where nothing is happening. So it's I don't it's double ended to me, I don't know. So the way the way that I was reading and I hopefully you remember a little bit and hopefully you remember a little bit, but the way that I was reading his comments as far as what he wanted to talk about was with in regards to Atlanta pushing gay folk out. Yeah, so Okay, so go ahead. Well one of the things they talked about doing for Midtown Atlanta is making it more family friendly. And so when people say when they say family friendly, that can be, no, it is term for anti-gay because they don't feel like gay people have family values. And so what they want to do in Midtown is make it, they want to get rid of the bars, the gay bars. They want to move the remaining gay culture that's at that percent of Midtown and put it elsewhere. They haven't said where else, but they do know they want to change it to where it is not gay. Why do you say you want gay? I think it's great because I always follow the gays. So wherever they move us to next, okay. we're gonna be popping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 being some like fighting to be there. Like so, the the clubs that are in Midtown mm -hmm. don't really cater to black gay people. So to me, I'm just like, I'm, that's not my battle to fight because guess what? I'm okay with partying at my friend's house in my neighborhood. Like, I don't need to go to Midtown. And I think that's a misconception that we always have. It's like we fighting for for people to accept, not, I guess not accept us, but it's like, it's not just the straight people that don't want you, the white gay people don't want you there either. So it's like, I'm not about to stand up and fight for that because that's not like something I feel like well, I, 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 mean, will, I will say uh, one thing that one of the one of the determining factors in me relocating <laughs> to Atlanta was because I had this understanding that being gay in Atlanta was OK. So if you do not live in Atlanta and you're hearing us have this discussion now, I, I can understand that their feelings may potentially change. You know what I'm saying? And is that something that we're OK with to say that it's not my fight? you know, uh, black gays and white gays aren't really connecting and, 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 and becoming one anyway. It's all, you still have that racial barrier between gays, whether you're white or black. It's like, I don't know, I didn't feel that and I didn't know that relocating to Atlanta. So hearing that now kind of makes me feel like, eh, I mean, I don't consistent. want it to be that way. That's it's consistent everywhere. everywhere. New yeah. York, San Francisco, there's those two different silos that happen. But and is it okay though? It's and obviously it's, it's, not okay, but we are still, you know, indoctrinized into all of us that's sitting here, everybody that's in America, you know, we continue to oppress the oppressed. 
So, I mean, even in the lesbian community, we that, okay. We we oppress each other. Like femmes can't do this, studs can't do that. You know, <laughs> top is bottom. It just happens. But <laughs> it's like hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, no shit. But what is my thing? I I I want someone, <laughs> all you commenters, to tell me when um you go into a gay neighborhood that is not popping that the property value has right. not increased right. significantly. Right. Because if you can show me any neighborhood that that has not happened, I will be like, hmm, otherwise, fine, let them move out of Midtown. Go, you want to go to West End? To I'm about that life. <laughs> Wherever you go, I'm following. I'm and there. I'm purchasing property. <laughs> West End, yes. So that when they want to <laughs> when they want to justify yeah. that bad boy, well, right. I'm a set. So go ahead. Well, that's what's happening. They move to the West. I mean, we <laughs> have, but we have yeah. a Southwest LGBT group where that's we have true. monthly meetings and we hang out with each other and we do stuff because it's not about making people accept us. It's about realizing that we're worthy of, of our own and, and making our own instead of running for someone else to say like you need your cater your business needs to cater to me instead of saying like well uh, we we had no enough people to really do something um, that we can just do our own thing I don't I don't feel like it's a necessary and I'm like I'm not saying that it's okay that white and gay I mean white and black gays don't party together I think we should I don't think there's anything wrong with it all I'm saying is like when I, even when I hear family values I don't think that because I feel like uh, me and my husband are a family, and when we have kids, it's going to be certain things that I don't want my kids to see or be around, like drunk people. Mm -hmm. Whether they're gay, straight, or whatever, I don't want my kids around drunk people. That's so, just my opinion. They're not going to they're not gonna gentrify certain areas of the gay midtown, because let's look at it. They permanently painted the damn street on Tinted. That's midtown. true. Like, really? Right. You know what I'm saying no? Right. Right. No, no, no. They've done stuff like them in Atlanta all the time. Move people here and there. Look what happened with the Olympics. Yeah, they're 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 they moved the homeless. Whole, not but, all those people are homeless. Some of those people have places to stay. Okay. They completely displace whole communities of people. That's true. Okay. So for the right amount of money, too. right? So for the right amount of money, they'll do anything. So I don't know. Maybe I live in a dream world. Maybe I am always trying to look at people differently in terms of like positive energy. I don't know. But like, I'm a firm believer in that. It should like race should not matter, and and this is I'll, I'll, I'll say this specific in America. I'll say this in the world. <laughs> no, but no, in my world, in, in the world that I'm able to go to, to go out of, to, to breathe air in, in my world. I don't, I don't know about the people in Texas. I don't know about the people in California, but I'm talking about my life <laughs> currently living in Atlanta. In my world, I want to exist in a world where we don't have to have that conversation regarding race, and especially if we are oppressed people. And, and it's just for. And, and, and this is why I say this because my event in August, Beeman in Hot Lauderdale, is at a gay-owned resort. That's one plus. But when I told the the people that I was promoting it to that it is a uh, white gay-owned, they were like, "What? Why? What's? The, why are we? Why are we going there? Like, do you see our skin? What's? What's? What are we going there for? Like, okay, so you're helping the white gay, but you're not helping us. And I just felt all sorts of ways about that, like. Are you serious? But that like, goes back to what we were just talking about when it came to the monkey hoodie and everything else. It's always it's always an issue. Everything everything shouldn't always be a race issue. It just goes right back to what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, so yeah, and I did agree. <laughs> everything I, is an issue and I did when agree. it comes to race, whether it comes to homosexuality. Why does every single thing have to be an issue? And my response to the person was, you can't be excited that I'm putting money back into the gay community. It's it's a problem because it's a white. Guy. I just felt all wrong about that, and like hearing the conversation now about how it's just it is what it is. We live in America. It's 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 you know oppressed people oppress people, and that's just okay. Not saying that you said it was okay, but it's just like it's so normal that it's like whatever. Say that. Like you know. I say that. Well, I didn't say a lot of things on the other video, but people took it a certain way. So I'm just gonna say that at the end of the day. <laughs> We should try to band together and come together in terms of helping each other as opposed to just being like, okay, you're right, I don't want anything to do with you. Or you're a woman, I don't want anything to do with you. But do you you think, know what I'm saying? But do you think white gay issues and black gay issues are the same? Not all of the time, because we go, well, I feel, speaking for myself as a black gay man, I feel like I've gone through certain things that a white gay man will never go through. 
But as gay people, we all have to deal with a lot of shit, period. So in my mind, I'm like, we could be a part of this collective and love, let's help each other out be better for the collective. As opposed to saying, okay, there's a line drawn and you're on that line and I'm on this side. So when I get my shit together and fixed, I'll worry about you. But until then, like no, because gay marriage was passed for everyone that's gay, not just white gays and black gays. So, I mean, the person that just left is married, isn't it? Yeah. You're married, you're married. So, and I was a part of the freedom to marry uh, movement also. So, so when you I say mean, that, I know that. I mean, what you're saying, you're preaching to the choir because I get it. I do, but I feel like in your world, you have to realize there are some realities where it's not like, it's not saying that I feel like I, I don't care because it's white. I feel like because there was a dress code where you can't wear a hoodie or you can't wear certain things to come into Blake's, that's a problem. Or when you go to Burkhart's and it's like these trash people coming, they cheat, they want, like you making right. these type of comments and you're talking about black people, no, I'm not coming to your establishment. Why would I? Right. Why would I subject myself to that instead making my own? And that's what I mean. It's like, I'm not gonna keep begging you to accept me when I can go and make my own because I'm more than capable. I have the mindset and the drive to do whatever I, I decide to do. So if I don't wanna do that and I don't wanna be oppressed by these people, I'm gonna go out and make space. like. You say Monique is doing, that's what I'm talking about doing, like standing up. I don't have to go to your establishment. We can have house parties, we can kick it, we can play cards, we can jump from each other's houses because we have houses, we have spaces that we can be welcome into. We don't have to go to these people's spaces, give them our money, and then they'd be like, well, we don't want to come here anyway, but thanks for your money. That's what I'm talking about. So to, to kind of go against what you're saying, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So if someone came to me and I did, you know, uh, have my venue at a gay owned, but it wasn't black gay owned, um, first I do my research on anything I put myself inside of. So, you know, granted it might have been a white gay person, I would have been able to then educate. That's a moment for education because just because you're gay doesn't necessarily mean that you are all knowing about all of these different pockets of what you're doing. So that's a moment to educate and you shouldn't be frustrated that the person was like, so you couldn't find, because usually that is my response. So you couldn't find black person. Like, so you can uh, take that moment, you can take that moment to then educate me and say, well, Olivia, I have done my research and they have done da, 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 in our communities. And so this is why I'm making this move. And that's me gonna back off and be like, oh, okay. Okay, so, so, like, <laughs> so no, I did, I did explain uh, my particular uh, network and relationship, yeah, that's fine, um, relationship with the owner of the resort. And the person's response was, so you can't find another resort. And so my response to them was, So then that's not friend. Right. That person is not a resource. Can they not be happy for what that person doing? is not happy for you. So now we're moving on to the conversation. And I don't, even, I don't even want to think it's in terms of them not being happy for me. I think it's in terms of them just being, I don't know, bitter or whatever word against the white part of it all. And it's like, I, I don't know, I just don't feel like that should be a major issue. I just, I don't know. It's an issue with everything else. Right. According to what we've been saying. I mean, it is I'm an issue. I'm here I'm here. I'm here with it you. It is an issue. <laughs> yeah. It is an issue. Oh, issue. To sit there and always have, have to, to be, be an issue. Mind. Like, I can't really address the the, home, the, the, the gay community because I, just, I honestly don't know. Like, I'm just really listening and getting the feel for it. I'm talking about it in terms of as a people and Black and white, stand away. Why does everything have to be a race issue? Why can't you just go to the resort and have fun? Bruh. You can, you can, you can contribute to the black community as well as contribute to the white community. And this may offend some, but I'm just gonna put it out. A lot of times, when you go into a black establishment, you don't really get the customer service that you want, or that you're looking for, or that you should get. And this, this, this is just based on my experience. This is based off of being in retail management for years. <laughs> so sometimes, you don't want to You don't want And I think it should be okay to step outside of the black community and go to the white community. I mean, hold on. So hold I'm on. saying, hold on. 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 Come on. Hold on. Right. <laughs> I can't focus, right? Now. Wow. I can't focus. Because that is a thousand percent what I was saying in the first video. And ever since as soon as you said that, I just I was like, didn't I just say
say But you were here. the words then I'll just come out of this black community and go support somewhere else. I didn't even say that. But wow. Oh my God. I cannot believe it. But at the same time, you know what? I'm not going to be petty. <laughs> I am going to say I completely understand everything that you are saying and I vibe with it because it's everything that I said in my other video. And what I will say is <laughs> Because I appreciate you for stepping out of the group and acknowledging that I know a little bit about Wes. We're not best friends, but I know that Wes does not have anti in his heart. So this is what I'm sure he is saying. Although you weren't really confirming it, but you were like, I hope this, you said I hope. But yes, that's where I'm vibing from. And at the end of the day, if you really get to know the root core person of who I am, I have a huge heart. It is too big for this world. Too fucking big for this world. So I'm appreciative that even though it's in the second video and you weren't really vibing with me the first video, that you're able to say <laughs> the exact same thing that I said in the first video. So I'm all here, sis. I'm all here. I'm woke. <laughs> I am woke. I'm glad that you're woke. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And Let me flip my I'm gonna lay real quick. down and have to do a lot of disagreeing. Okay, so here we go. All right. All right, because you knew that was happening. Of course. Right, you knew that was going to come. You don't so, like white people. I, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's because she got away with it. Because it's okay, right? No, I understand no, that at all. No, go ahead, go ahead. When it comes to, okay, so the, I'm tired of that narrative. I will kind of like, and I, I kind of get upset when I have my friends even say, you know, when you go to black business, oh, they always don't open up on time, or they not nice to you, and this, that, and the third. And the thing is, is, is that a lot of stuff happens to, in, in the white companies, and we just take it, and we expect so much from our black counterparts that it almost becomes imbalanced. Then it was Tamika Mallory, a simple hello. wait, allow me to finish. Tamika Mallory was thrown off of a damn American Airlines plane and we kept on flying. Like, I mean, come on. Like, how many situations do we have where we are profiled, we are not treated okay, but we still continue to go to that business? We go to a black business, one time, the lady wasn't nice to us, she was like, hello. So are you saying that, or suggesting that we should support white people? No, I'm not saying that we shouldn't suggest what, uh, not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't support white businesses. What I am saying is, is that we expect a it's lot a from, it's a double standard. We expect so much more from our black businesses than we do with our white businesses. And I feel like that's not fair. We don't give an opportunity to, if you see something happening in your, the black establishment that you don't like, how about we take that opportunity to say, hey, let me talk to the owner about blah, blah, blah. Let me help improve and increase it. Because if I have a problem with it, obviously, uh, other people are going to have a problem with the customer service or with the lateness. Because those are usually the, the common things that I hear that people say, that's why I don't do black businesses. But I mean, we really, I mean, integration, statistically, let's look at numbers. Oh, Lord. Integration did not help the flourishing of the black community in America. Our school system, our economy, Come on, what was our, I mean, we did not thrive <laughs> because of integration. So this is an opportunity for all of us woke if and the people who say they woke to continue to reinvest. If you could even reinvest 50% of everything you spend every single day into a black business, let it rotate for longer than six damn hours. I'm pretty sure we will probably have less of the issues that you're speaking of with regards to why does it always have to be a race issue? Because we'll be building up our community. So it kind of, it kind of sounds like, I'm sorry, you I, yeah. So it kind of sounds like you're saying, I'm just interpreting, mm. that no matter what service I've received from said black business, I should support it because it's black. No. And I, hold on. I didn't say Hold that. on. 
I'm just saying what it sounds like. Cause, you know, so let me help you. It's all about thought. Let me finish my thought. You can't finish your thought if you don't say something that I'm not saying. But you're, 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 you what I, what, and, and if that's not what you're saying, that's, I'm glad that that's not what you're saying. Right. But that's what I <laughs> So, um, what I will say to that is my stance on service, because I, I, all I know is service industry. That's all I know. I, I didn't work in an office, I'm not in a medical field, whatever. I just know service, 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 service. So, my, my, my expectations are of optimal service to me, regardless of your skin color, your gender, whoever you're sleeping with at night. I want prime A grade service because I'm giving you my fucking money. And if I go to a black business, I want grade A service. But what I will say is that because you are in a position as a black owned business owner, not only should you be telling all your associates how they need to uh, treat your guests, but it would be nice, let me just say this, it would be nice that because I am black and I am giving you my money, that you won't treat me like us, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because we should be, we should feel like, as black business owners, entrepreneurs, we should feel that, that excitement, that happiness that we're in a position to provide to the community. So if we're providing to the community, it should be optimal grade A service regardless. So in, in, my, in, my, in my attitude is, it's because you're performing a job. You may be going through whatever you're going through in life, sis, brother, whoever I'm talking to, but once you, ding, you're on a clock, <laughs> I don't care what the hell you're going through, you need to provide optimal grade A service. And the only reason why I say that is because I've been in this industry for over 20 some odd years, and that's always what I get, no matter the fucking problems that I have in life. So. That would be my response to whatever it is you're saying. I have no problem. If it was, if it was a black-owned, gay-owned resort, beautiful. I'm going to the resort because it's a beautiful fucking resort, and when y'all go, y'all gonna have a fucking great eight time. But yes, I, I, I have no problem supporting them. And when I go into places like Busy Bees or to places like um, um, Old Lady Games or whatever, I, I have a good time. But you know, I do see that ratty-ass fucking service. That's why I did the review of that one restaurant. I, it was ratty service. So I'm gonna have a problem with that. And even more so a problem because you are black owned. So that's like my statement. And can I move to something that's bigger? My point. Beyond so black owned problem owned. because it's black owned. Just in the black community. Let's move beyond the small businesses. Let's say Walmart on Cascade. Please if say you work there, I'm so sorry. Right. But Walmart on Cascade, for example. I shouldn't have to, okay, I wanna support my black community. I should have to go to the Walmart on Cascade. The line is all the way out the door. Every time I'm coming in, I have to call corporate or call the front. Hey, I need help. Food is expired. The Publix on Cascade. I should have to drive all the way to Peachtree City, all the way to Smyrna to get optimal service, to get fresh food, but that's what it is. I go because I try to support and I've made this issue aware to you on numerous occasions so we can keep the flow going and keep it going for more than six days and still what? No change. This, those so are those black, black owned businesses. No, they're not. No, she's black 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 black. But no, they but no, 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 no. They become very different because now let's go into. Oh no. No, that's, no, that is very different. That is not a black owned company. And typically, when you go to certain places that are in black neighborhoods, they send and, certain products there. Yep. Yeah, not only but do they send certain products. products. No. Not only do they send certain products there, they also um, make sure that the, the income is not the same as if you go to a place that's smart. That is true. So, because they're trying to continue this indoctrination and trying to keep you there. So, you have somebody who's making probably less than a dollar twenty-five on the dollar, the same, the same job all the way over here in the white neighborhood. They're getting paid more. Then you take away benefits, especially when we're sitting there talking about Walmart, no shade. They take away benefits. Then they take away um, the, the opportunity for them to have transportation and things to that to that uh, business. So now you have somebody who's disgruntled because they can't even afford to work there. But as a consumer, I can't patronize in that community because you don't have what I need. Yeah, you the products, or whatever. It's not a price. I can't. And it's well, not. I gotta like you to go to Walmart in black communities. I'm telling you, go to WeBuyBlack.com. Go to official Black Wall Street and find the same products that you're looking for at Walmart that somebody has. I'm not telling you to go to Walmart at all. I'm telling you, don't. I'm telling you, please. Let me see you. I mean, we got toothpaste, we got toilet paper, we got 
Feminine products, webuyblack.com has everything you will need. You don't need to go to Walmart, and I don't want you to. And I'm mad that you have to go through those experiences that you have at Walmart. So now, tell them, you know what, this is how I'm gonna impact this. Instead of going to Walmart over here, don't go to Walmart at all. Go here, go to my black business, and let it rotate for six hours, with longer than six hours. I wish it was six days and shit. It's, it's not even seven hours. So, so according to so, so what black business, if I'm looking for these products, would you suggest that I go to? Okay, I'm so gonna get optimal customer yes, service. Yes, yes, so we have webuyblack.com. No, and yes, the, no, I, I don't want to go no, online. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm directing you, I'm directing you. Go to webuyblack.com. It's okay. actually a resource to show you where all businesses are in your neighborhood, as well as Official Black Wall Street. Official Black Wall Street, I love that app because it will ping me and tell me, you're within two, two miles of this and this and this establishment. And they see the things that I purchased and will say, okay, so it looks like you like to go to beauty supply stores. We found one in your neighborhood. You can find farming and grocery, especially if you're in the West End. Please, everybody and their mama in the West End got a garden and they'll give you all your fresh produce. Chef Aki's out there, Beretta Scott King's out there. I mean, I, last year my goal for myself was every single day that I spent a penny, 50% of my money has to go to a black business. I'm not saying it wasn't challenging, but it damn sure is, is doable. And so my goal for this year is 75%. Every single day, if I went to McDonald's, now I gotta re-up and go somewhere else to make sure that that money is balanced. But it has to be a business that's giving optimal service. That's that's, 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 so that's catering to the, 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 the customer. So when I go, when I get pinged, <laughs> I'm not gonna get my optimal customer. Right, service. right. I'm going to say that in the places that I've gone to, I've always, I, like Tassili's, Love it. I know okay. that when I walk in, it's like, more okay. reality. I know when I go in there, I'm probably gonna wait a little bit longer. I don't understand because it's all raw food, so I don't understand what it's <laughs> 20 minutes. But I'm being <laughs> greeted, it's, hey sis, how you doing? And the food is the bomb. Now, the thing is, is, is that I'm not saying accept bad service. I'm saying when you have bad service at any establishment, make your voice heard. Obviously, you saying something to Walmart, they ain't doing shit. So how about you take that same attitude and say, and also bring it in a space where it's not like, are y'all not doing this? Which is sometimes what I see some people I know do. I'm just saying, if we can come in and say, hey, you know what? I did not like that exchange. I didn't like what you did. I, can we help? Yes. This, this young lady needs a little bit more customer experience training. Can we get, give that to her? Give them an opportunity to flourish and improve is what I'm asking. I'm not saying give them a pass for their black business. I'm saying allow cool. them to improve because we don't have as many large corporations. But if you've been around for a long time, you don't think that people have said whatever the case may be. Not necessarily. Not but necessarily. No, no, because there are a lot of times we like to not complain within each other, but they won't say nothing to the business. No, but, but I think that I'm educated enough to be able to complain in a way that doesn't make me look like the bitter black woman or the whatever but there are plenty of black businesses that i patronize <laughs> and i'm made aware <laughs> you know this is not this proper not customer service. service this is not optimal customer service i've been in retail management before i know what it should look like i know that i work and train like a dog to make sure that i provided that customer service and this is not what it looks like i've come back to again try to patronize and support that business and it's the same thing over and over mm. and i'm not saying all black businesses but i'm saying that they're out there and it's always a push to Oh, the black community. Put your money in the black bank. Ugh. I mean, okay, and that's fine. But once I try something, and once I keep telling you that this is not working for me, and that I'm trying to support you, then I'm gonna move elsewhere. Try something so else though, so inside so of the black community, so because we have more than one black. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. So, we, so we're gonna wrap this topic up, and uh, <laughs> starting, from, starting from the left to the right, is gentrification okay in your book? Yes or no? She's gonna say no because y'all say yes. No. <laughs> I have a question though. Yes, I didn't say no. much on that last statement because I just had a quick. I was quiet for a reason, but like, so I have a business, right? And I have a lot of white clients, and so it kind of irks me a little bit when we feel that you have to. It kind of comes off as if you can only support the black community. 
And I almost have a problem with that because white people support me. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that you don't have to only support black people. I like the whole idea of the surf. I do put it into my black community and I do feel you should support small businesses. But I mean, there are some white people who have a struggle too. So I don't see why I can't just support small businesses. I don't see why I always have to support a black one, especially if I'm not getting the service that I feel that I deserve or the service that I want. So. That, that kind of hurts me a little bit because I mean you have some white people who didn't grow with a, a silver spoon in their mouth and they try. But they to still are privileged. Come they on, do now. have a privilege. They I'm not saying privilege. that they don't have a privilege, but I'm saying they didn't grow with a silver spoon in their mouth and they trying to make. But they still are just like everybody else, and they deserve. If they <laughs> give me the service that I want. I'm going to support them. Yeah. And so if I'm saying I'm only supporting the black community, do I only want black people to support my business? No. Because I mean I got some great white clients and I appreciate them. The problem is, is that we are in control of $3 trillion and it only rotates in our community for six hours. Opposed to in the Jewish community, it rotates for 27 days. That is what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm don't wrong. support white so people. So maybe these Jewish I'm people are giving some better customer service and stuff. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm just saying. 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 I'm just
You know, Good that's a part. black woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we're the same, but I think it should not have anything to do with gender or race, and people should get paid what you negotiate, what you get paid. Okay. I'll leave it there. Um, should people get paid the same? No. Um, it just depends. Yes, they should be. If they're getting paid, if they're, getting, if they're doing the same job, it should be equal pay. Okay. So then the next question for you is, should we know how much everyone is getting paid? No. <laughs> I don't like that question. Because <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't. What do you mean? Like, just to be like. Yeah. If we're both lawyers, mm -hmm. we both just got this job at this law firm. Y'all are cool. Should y'all know each other's paycheck? That's not no, that's stuff. personal business right there. So that's the yes or no? No. 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 But if we're friends, I can't be like... I mean, we can't talk to each other. It's just everybody. Yeah, like, 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 but if I don't know, I don't got to tell you how much I'm If you didn't tell you me, no. But if you tell me, yes. I should hear through the grapevine at work. Oh, you know, such a so the reason so the reason why I brought this up is because um, everybody knows about the whole Monique situation. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. She was saying, "Well, Amy Schumer got this, and the guys got this, and why am I getting this?" So my my the reason why I asked those questions is because I was um, a co manager at Walmart, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, making over a hundred k. Thank you. And uh, it was cool for what it was because I was making the money, but when I was in that position, there was no way that anyone on in my position was going to get paid what I was getting paid because I was the top shift manager. So, and, I, and what I say by that is that I did everything that I needed to do, that I was expected to do, and more. So because I'm doing all of those things and bringing all of this to the table, no, he shouldn't get paid the same, and no, she shouldn't get paid the same. Um, and so for me, I think in terms of the Moniques of the world and everyone else that feels that it could be a potential race and or gender issue, you need to keep those particular things into, into perspective when requesting something of yourself. Do you, do you deserve it or do you not deserve it? And so that's why I kind of like wanted to have this dialogue because there is an issue with women getting paid less than men, but then that's why I ask, should everyone get paid the same? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. With everything that you just said at Walmart, if Amy Goldstein came in, worked just as hard. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sorry. the name. Sorry, I went to Jerk Seven Eagles. I love Amy Goldstein. But if uh -huh. she came in, worked just as hard as you did, but you found out that, hey, we have the same credentials, same years, she worked just as hard as I did, but you found out through the great grapevine or you accidentally saw a pay stub or however you found out that Amy uh -huh. Goldstein was making more than you. How would that make you feel? I would feel some sort of way. And, and the way I would feel would be, is my performance in question? Because to your point, if we're the same, if we're, if, I don't really know how that would be because I would have been way better than Amy, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shout out to all my Walmart people, y'all know I was the best manager anyway. But um, that's, where, that's where my personality would kick in like this. What the fuck she ain't doing better than me, so what the fuck? So, okay. so this she's is the- She's privileged, she's Amy Goldstein. Mm -hmm. Right. So but that's, that's, that's where you're coming from. Saying. That's where you're coming that's from. That's what she's Well, saying. fortunately for me, and just in my work experience, and the Walmart that I was in, we didn't have that particular issue. So I can't say that that's a company issue, but where I was, if we didn't, race was never an issue. And the reason why it was never an issue was because we were in a black, full black Jamaican community. So you couldn't be like having Amy Goldstein come in and be like, hey, I'm here, let me get a job. It's, I didn't experience that. So I can't really, you know, say too much about that. I can just speak about my experiences. I can tell you so, my answer. Go ahead. But, but I just I think it's it's not even because when you're getting an offer, they don't know your mm -hmm. your your how much you're gonna work. So somebody could be getting paid more than you that does less than you, which I find personally that people who do get paid more sometimes do less. They don't do as much. And okay. and I think it's just education because like I was telling a friend who was interviewing, she was like, Well yeah, this position I don't know if I even wanna take it because the, uh, the amount it starts at is blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, why don't you ask, how much did you budget for this? Mm -hmm. This position. Mm -hmm. Not you don't go in with like, I'm gonna take what's on the paper. Mm -hmm. How much did you budget for this position? Mm -hmm. Pause. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because that's when they tell you how much they have in the budget. If you don't ask those questions, they're going to give you what's on that paper and not a penny more because mm -hmm. that's just what you have to do. And like some people walking in with that education is going to be like how much you budget. So they might get $10,000 more than you mm -hmm. and y'all do the exact same job, got the exact same credentials. You just didn't, you weren't, I guess, exposed to how to ask and what to ask. And that's just different cultures and communities. So I'll go on in a little bit and elaborate, or add, let me just add, that when I when I did find that, if, if there was a situation, knowing me and my work history and how I am as a professional, uh, and I know that I'm getting paid to do something, if I did find out that Amy was making more than me, then it would challenge me to, to perform better or increase my performance so that I damn well get paid more than her. I wouldn't create a stink and be like, oh no, oh no, no, no. It would just push me to work harder because there, in my mind, there has to be a reason outside of her race why she's making more than me. That's normally how I would look at things, and that's just me. And statistically, that's not necessarily what happens. I have been a victim of myself. What happens, what happens, happens just period. But you're isolating yourself and thinking that now you're taking your own experiences and creating a world view of it versus looking at research and data and then comparing the two. So what I'm saying is my own experience is actually highlighted in a lot of the things that we're seeing happen today. Mm -hmm. I actually trained three people, two white men, one black woman, but you know, um, th three people who advanced, who I, I trained them, and then they got the job that I was supposed to get or vying for. And one of them was paid, I'm, he is my trainee, and he was paid twice as much as I was, and he was my train. Well, didn't you say something in the beginning you didn't negotiate what you thought you were worth? Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing to that and saying that culturally I didn't understand back okay. then. Okay. Now I know every time I walk into a situation is exactly, that's when you said that, I was like, yeah, dude, what was the budget? What is the budget? Because culturally, black women are not taught, at least I wasn't taught, that you go in there and you negotiate and you recognize, look, I'm worth this. You're either going to take it or leave it. I went into interviews like, please give me a job. Then I got to a position right. where I was like, um, I'm right. mad and I got four offers, so what you want to do? Right. So, it, you know, right. it works differently. Are you trying to shame me right now? I'm agreeing with you. Okay, thank the you. Word, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because the way you were saying it, right, you know. Agreement, it's a great <laughs> <definitely call. laughs> No, but, okay, okay, so. The great conversation. I'm liking everyone's you know, thoughts and all of that. <laughs> Ashley, should women shave? <laughs> um, I think women just. I like to be hairless. I don't shave. I like to go get a wax. I want you to answer that question. I'm crazy. Should women? <laughs> really? But I mean, like, do you mean like should they shave versus waxing, or should they be hairless? <laughs> shave or hairless. Let's say hairless. Yes, because. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, when it's time to go to work, you should, I'm gonna be honest, when it's time to go to work, you should not have to dust clear, clear the back out, back shouldn't be flying out, oh dust God. shouldn't be coming out, you should be able to get to work. And I'm going to help you get to work by preparing myself <laughs> and making sure that it's well manicured, okay. highly decorated, <laughs> and ready for you to go to work. So do I? I can't speak. I mean, a lot of women like to be, oh, I'm natural, oh, I'm black, oh, me too. I appreciate that. I'm proud of my heritage and all its offerings, but I'm going to get a wax. I'm going to get my underarms waxed. I'm going to get her waxed, and I'm going to make sure that she's highly decorated so he can stay woke and be ready to go. All right, so that's what you're, that's what you're, you're crying, right? are, are talking about is, is in terms of sex. So like, so that he's ready to go. I mean, yeah, and I like it too. Like, even when I'm not, when I don't have a partner and I'm not being sexually active, it makes me feel like a woman. I mean, I don't, I don't want a bush. That doesn't make me feel feminine. My personal thing. I don't feel feminist with the bush. I don't want to see it. I want to look at it. I want to see me. Oh, okay. Let me wear That's what I want to see. I'm a, before I go down the line, I want to say that there is an amazing show on Netflix called Big Mouth, mm -hmm. and there's an episode where the young lady, uh, the young girl, talks to her vagina, and it is so hilarious. It is so hilarious. It is so hilarious. It's so hilarious. It's so hilarious. It's so hilarious. It's so hilarious. 
And so, you know, could y'all imagine being able to talk to your genitals? So I'm gonna not go down the line, I'm gonna come to you and ask you, do you think that women should shave? Hairless. And I'll add on to that bottoms. Do you think that women in bottoms? You got that women in bottoms? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I, I don't really have an opinion. For me, it just, for me, it depends on the person. Good job. If I feel like they good with hair, then okay. But if they like really, really super hairy, where like something might get caught somewhere, no. It's okay. Okay, Larry. Do you feel that women in bottoms? <laughs> I feel like if that's what you want to do, you do it. PC. What? All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm gonna come back to you, <laughs> Sir Trey. Do you think that women and bottoms should change? Oh, if they want to, I think it's a personal preference. If you want to, then go for it. If not, then don't. But I think that some people are more attracted to hairy people, and some people are more attracted to less hairy people. So. Another PC question. I mean, PC response. So she was. So she answered the question truthfully for her and what she would prefer for her and the people that she's dealing with. These gentlemen but are you didn't answering, ask me what answering. I prefer. You ask me, do I think women Wait, and bottoms? Okay, okay, okay. 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 They're, they're black and so, all right, I guess. What do you prefer? Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. I think I prefer hairless over hair, but I don't, I'm not. If you're hairy, then I'm okay with it. I don't like too much hair though. So my okay. personal preference would be less hair. Okay. I'm gonna save you for last. I'm gonna answer the question, okay? We, we know you got a lot boiling in the pot. The, the, the top of the pot is going like this because the water is, is boiling. But women, I can care less because there's nothing that I want to do. <laughs> nothing at all. I think it's disturbing to see hairy nipples. And <laughs> uh, there are women that like the nipples or areolas, whatever you call them. And it's also disturbing to see like the white caked up deodorant if like a woman lifts up their arm and it's just chilling. I don't know. I would say for me, like she said, it's not ladylike for me. But I can care less because there's nothing that I want absolutely <laughs> nothing that I want to do. Bottoms. Bottoms, let me talk to you. If you're a bottom right now, I love ass. I'm an ass connoisseur. It just it, it just does a lot for me. If I go back there and it's bushy, can't see. <laughs> Then it's gonna be quite disturbing for me. Oh um, so I would love oh for God. you to not necessarily shave, but like clipper it up, tremor it up, get a little peach buzz is acceptable. <laughs> but like a bush, it's not really for me. Um, so yeah, what about you? So this is the impression that I'm talking about. That we oh, we, we oppress. How am I oppressing? The oppressed continue to oppress because you said women and bottoms. Right? So oh, you already created that's, like, that's, No, that's the topic. Body. That's the topic. You said it's, women it's and bottoms, right? It's on here. No, it but it doesn't matter. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm talking no, to. No, no, see, but see, once again, she's grouping me into this thing. And I'm, I asked everybody, <laughs> I asked everybody on Culture Club, what are we talking about today? And another person that is not here, Sir Tony. It's because you're there. Like, it's because, <laughs> because you're looking at that camera. Right, so right. we didn't say. See, we, I, I, have, I have other issues with where you were going with, but not this particular issue. I have other issues with the whole, you know, uh, why, what women should do. But I have more issues with this particular side of it because what Wes was just talking about is when he added it for the gentleman, which was bottoms. So when you added that extra that's into it, for me and women. right? Yeah. So when you added that, and I understand that that's not your topic. I understand that was Tony's, but it just kind of it's. It, it, so there's, it a, reason why, the there's a reason why there's a reason why I added it. Because there's a clear reason why I added it. Okay, are you gay? I'm bi. Uh, bi. So you like men? Yeah, with me. Okay. She's not having to deal with the bottom situation, so that's the only reason why. But it's I didn't still a heteronormative. Her, 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 her response, her response could have been. Her it response is heteronormative. Been, what is the it's a heteronormative. Oh, my response could have been if I'm giving head, I don't want. No, I don't want you. To, no, I want you to enjoy the moment. Until you're talking about what you said about what you should do. That's what I do. If you want to be bushy and free and black, <laughs> but the thing is, that you said, but the thing is, but the thing is, is that, and black. but the thing is that I have an issue with it is, is that one, when we're saying if you 
want to be bushy and black and this, it, it almost comes off to me at least as though it's a negative. That's one and two, it allows, it allows a space because two of you said it, that it's not ladylike, it's not feminine. For it's, me. It's hair. For me. And, I, but that's still like, well, like me, indoctrinization. That's still like kind of like you're not seeing like. But so, I should have okay, hair so then what, so then what, to be considered black or to be considered woke. And the reason that I say it, what? I didn't say that. Either. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. It seemed like when I was talking, like it bothered you because I said that it was feminine for me. And that's a personal preference. But I was and about to go okay, into the preference. It, I was about that's to go okay preference. for it to be your personal preference because for me, I should. It's a personal preference for me, but it has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, because I'm a woman, because it's a lady like I do it, I do it because it's more manageable. I just, and I do it because for me, and I prefer when my women are with me that they are Brazilian. So that's because the reason why for Olivia is because with hair, with women, mm -hmm. In that region, <laughs> when I'm giving head, sometimes there's a little bit of an <laughs> I agree. And I don't want that in my face that I'm going there. Okay, so and so for me, it is a preference. However, if you want to have a bush that is wonderful and it doesn't mean that you are less ladylike it means Olivia's not gonna fuck you so there's just a difference so I think so what I'm hearing now is like ladylike so a man can have over no women and me we're talking about women's bushes women and me I'm gonna smell your varsity on your brain I'm sorry I don't wanna smell myself smelling like and so, and so, but why is it not also man like? And so, why, and so, we, why, why are we defining it? But that's, 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 but that's that sensitivity thing that we talk why about. That's, 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 that's all sensitive. Is an issue. Yeah, that's so, all so, sensitive. I, think, I don't want hair on my cat, so now I'm just, oh, I'm just, yeah, that's all sensitive. that you answered and you and you why specifically did you answer did you not feel like it was a sensitive situation did you not feel like that it could be considered sensitive i, yes, I wait i, I, think, I wait i think it's two different you. questions that circulated really because I, so i answered for the question that i thought but i think what she's answered for is like herself you, your preference so Maybe it's a difference fine. between should bottoms and women shave or do you prefer Fur. Because you're saying like Thank every you. single, this is what people, everybody should do. Exactly. And everybody should and, necessarily do And one plus one that. equals two. And so, <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's the problem. That's the thing that you're talking about earlier. Is no, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're not clear with your communication, you get different But what I'm saying is, even though she expressed herself the way she expressed herself, and I expressed myself the way I expressed myself, it is... Maybe, I guess it wasn't clear, but it was clear, I, well, I was clear with, with, with her response that she was talking for herself. And she wasn't telling every woman and every bottom out there, or every woman at the time when I asked her the question, to shave and you should be hairless. She was talking about her, it was clear, in my mind, because I'm woke, everybody's talking about being woke. I'm gonna need everybody on this panel to be woke. It was clear that she was talking about herself. And it's not always about, it's not, it doesn't always have to be a battle. It, depending not, on the way that she scripted this question, with depending on the way that she though, it. It's, it's how many people sit at this table. Out of all six of us, two people understood out of six people. So then the question to me and her, Thank you. we answered Thank you. We so all it's answered. not clear. Thank you. And so Thank you. Thank you. But for me, that was taken too little. Because we all know, as educated adults sitting on a panel, that we can't sit here and speak for the masses when it comes to something as personal as waxing. So I just thought that that was just, for me that was clear. 
Because I know we're all educated and we can't speak for the masses. But that's hey. offensive to say that because if you're, you're like, oh, we are educated. Yeah, we are all educated. But that doesn't mean that I assume. You made an assumption. That's not what the question said. And that's why when you said my answer was PC, it's not. You're asking me a generalization. But we all speak though. from experience. I, but and listen, I was but you listen, I know what you said, from. but listen to what I'm saying though. What I'm saying to you is don't don't come at me with like educated because that's that's like you're talking down to me now And I do get offended by that because it's like no that's your perspective And when you speak from your perspective you can't expect everybody to speak from your perspective because we all have different experiences Like you're saying we speak from experience So when I heard the question I heard a generalization and so did he and so did he and so did she So, so the, the two of you didn't the, so that's what I'm response. saying It's like so can I ask so can I ask the four of you? Okay could there not been a question stating, are you saying that all women and all bottoms should be He here? did ask a clarifying yeah, question. He did ask a clarifying question. Did I not? He clarified all the people. That's what he did. Four people did ask a question. But, but when I started with him, he could have asked that question. When I did with you, you could have asked that question, and she could have asked that question too. It but was why? Auto, but we're it was automatic. We're answering, we're answering, we're answering the question. We, we made a generalization. I answered it in a generalized manner. And, and then we threw it all in one bucket and said, "This is why." <laughs> no, I so, think I think not being. And this is this is what we were talking about. And this is what how the country is. It's so polarized that you're not willing to hear what we're saying. We're not saying what you're saying is wrong. Because what I said is we're all talking from different perspectives. So when I said that oh I, I heard a generalization and you guys heard what you heard it's like oh no that's not what I asked well why didn't you do something different because that's not what I did so like instead of saying like oh no that's not what I meant this is what I meant it's like I should have done something different nobody's wrong but what I'm saying is we're trying to communicate so when there's a miscommunication you have to clear it up and not just dismiss like oh well you just don't know what you're talking about and I'm, I just I asked the right question so that's what I'm saying so I hear your argument and it is, <laughs> and it is clearly valid and I also hear your snaps uh, but <laughs> your snaps, your, the, the snaps should have. So, so everything that you said. negates everything that you just said. And it can, whatever. Not tomato, not tomato. It's what not I, tomato, what tomato. What I'm saying, so this is what I will say without being extra. I hear both <laughs> sides. I'm, tr I'm doing it. Oh. I hear both sides. I'm still going to say that lumping everything into one bucket was unnecessary, for, especially for this particular discussion because we did not have to go there. It was, it was and, it, and, it, and it, it stems from that question that I asked in the, in the prior episode, you guys need to check that episode. Why are we always throwing everything into one pot? So that's all I will say. Can I add? Yes. Okay. So to the point about me saying, Everyone is educated. That wasn't to talk down on anyone. So let me be clear because I don't want it to seem as if I'm talking down on anyone. And I agree. Everyone speaks from their own experiences and their own perspectives. I agree with that. But I also agree with what Wes is saying. We're all sitting on this panel because we are educated. Not that one is more educated than the other, whatever the case may be. So why is it everything has to be taken and, and just deteriorated and broken down and be lumped into this one pot and made a big deal. The question was, we all took it as perspectives and that was that. That's, to me, that should have been that. No, I don't want it. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, you clarified. Yeah, I answered the question different. That's that. Why does everything have to be such a big deal to me? I mean, that, that's just how I feel. And it's, it goes back to the whole race thing. That's not to say that I'm not awake. It's not to say that I don't agree with a lot of things that's going on. All I'm saying is why does everything have to be a controversy or an argument or that's all I'm saying. Because it, it does get back to race. Okay. It does get back to gender. But why? Well let me all ask right. you this. So when you answer he didn't ask he didn't say anything about your answer. When I answered, he made a comment about my answer, right? So, so that, 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 I didn't say, so when I say, he was like, why well, can't oh, so another PC answer, another PC answer, and, and that's my thing, is like, he talked about earlier about people saying that he's, he's uh, against black people, but then you say, oh, somebody on the comments said, you are always giving a PC answer, and then a few times you say to me, I gave a PC answer. So it's, it's like, it's funny to me how that can happen. And like, it bothers us when it happens to us, but it, like we can do it to, it, and that's why I didn't respond when he said it to me. Cause I'm like, okay, well I'm just going off of what I heard. So, and, and that's why I'm pushing the communication thing. Because when you are communicating with people, I don't make assumptions. So I didn't assume he's talking about my preference cause he didn't ask me my preference. 
So uh, when you ask a person their preference, it's that you're gonna get a different answer of what I prefer and then what I think everybody else should do. So the question was, should women and bottoms shave? So I'm not gonna assume because I, he knows I'm gay, so asking me about what women should do, I'm not having sex with women, so that, should, that wouldn't even be a question to me, right? So that's what I'm saying, when, that's why I, I heard what he asked and I went with the answer I went with. It wasn't that I'm trying to be PC, it wasn't that I'm trying to be difficult or trying to break everything down, I'm just taking it for face value instead of assuming he means something different than what he actually says. And that's my thing, say what you, Say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't say something different and then expect me to assume that you meant something else. Just because I'm black like you doesn't mean I I interpret things like you. So I'm looking at it just at what you said. Are you saying that just because I'm a woman like Olivia that I should think? Because when I started talking, it was. That's Olivia. She doesn't care about that. Right. I mean, but I'm but we're the only two women on the panel. So just because I'm a woman, does that mean that if I say for me it's not feminine, that I'm saying it's disgusting for the next woman? But for me, it's not. Feminine. Well, see, the thing is, is that when I initially heard you speak about it, I didn't hear you say you might have, but I didn't hear you say for me it is you know not ladylike. I heard you say it's not ladylike. But so when I also you said, said that for me. But see, the thing is, is that as soon as you preface it's not ladylike, it's creating a judgment. So anyone who does have hair now is judged because it's not, I'm now not ladylike because I got hair. I didn't hear you. You might have said I didn't hear you say, for me. Then you made generalizations say, you know, and black. And, and then it just, it added, it was compounding. And I was like, whoa. Like but that, that was coming you were from making generalizations and judgments on an entire community about what you don't like. So I think, I think the no. bottom line is communication. Like you said. <laughs> the, 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 the bottom line and is you're not sure of the point, yeah. you're clarifying questions. Yeah, the bottom line is communication. And the bottom line is that there's always a battle. For me, the, the bottom line is that there's always a battle. And I'm going to extend that and say that there doesn't need to be one. If, if we could, and, and even, even in, in what I mean by that, in terms of battle, like, we don't have to raise our voices, we don't have to get intense, we don't have to get tight, we could just express, and express to clarify, and we'll just leave it at that. Thank you guys for tuning in to this particular episode, I really appreciate you, <laughs> I love you wholeheartedly, hopefully you are able to grab from any and everyone on this show, grab a little something, hold it there and hold it tight. I need you guys to leave comments under this video about all of the things that we discussed. I wanted to talk about Amada La Negra and, and everything and, 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 and have a lot of conversations, but we have to wrap it up. Yeah. So you have to pick me. Oh, you know I'm right here at Camp Creek. Yeah, that's fine. So you just pick me up tomorrow. I'll text you. I'll text you later today. See what you got going on. Oh, oh, man. Man. I love y'all. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. oh, who you got going on? Oh, uh, who you got going on? Chris is so good to see you. I love you too. You know, all right. I love all of y'all. See y'all later. Mom. Say some precious. <laughs> Yes, indeed. So y'all got y'all Jeremy fix. I know y'all really wanted him to be on, but that's what's going on. See, so it's always love behind the scenes. Y'all be trying to bring up drama and shit. Ain't nothing wrong with nobody going on. But anyways, I don't think we're going to resolve this. What, what, you had a question before Jeremy came in. No, we resolved it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, here's what I'll say. Okay. I, I thought, in my mind, Dating was going out on a like appointment set up. Like, okay, we're gonna go out to eat for this night. Interview. We we gonna go okay, then I'm gonna take this one out to eat, then I'm gonna take this one out to eat. No. What I'm finding out that dating is Netflix and chilling, hanging out with their friends, cooking dinners, 